White culture, if you could even call it culture, is based in racism. It was a narrative created by colonizers, like my Portuguese ancestors. I feel like on the inside of the church, we're fighting this historical context you talk about. In other words, we love the blessing of the cross, but we don't, we don't love to sit in it mm. and realize this is what God's asking me to do, to die to myself and to live for him, whatever context that's going to look like for me. But I want to flip that upside down because I think the other side of it is true with our nation's history. We miss, we understand the curse that was slavery, mm -hmm. white people do, and we say that was bad, mm -hmm. but we miss the blessing of slavery that it actually built up the framework for the world that white people live in yes. and lived in. And so a lot of people call this white privilege, and when you say those two words, it just is like a fuse goes off for a lot of white people because they don't want somebody telling them to check their privilege. And so I know that you and I... In order to justify what they were doing to other people on the continent of Africa and even here in North America. And the narrative was that we white people were better than all other races. And they did so through Christianity. They took the Bible and different scripture verses, twisted it around in order to fit the narrative of colonialism and white supremacy, and also the patriarchy. And the patriarchy is white man in power. White supremacy is white man in power. Colonialism is white man in power. And Christianity, for the most part nowadays, is white man in power. There are historical references and proof where the Catholic Church actually said to enslave an African was to save their soul. The kidnapped and enslaved Africans that were here in North America were preached different scripture verses than were actually in the Bible. And that's why they weren't allowed to read. Slave Bible. Remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Book of Exodus, redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. Gone is Galatians, and the verse, There is neither bond nor free, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And no Jeremiah, woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6.5, which is the famous verse, Slaves be obedient to your master. Because if they could read, then they could see that these scripture verses were incorrect and they couldn't be controlled anymore by this white God. Because if they could read, then they could see that these scripture verses were incorrect and they couldn't be controlled anymore by this white God. You can see this has become a struggle between good and evil. Satan has a question. <laughs> yes, sir, Chaplain Gill, but since neither one of us are God, I don't think either one of us are in any position to say who's good and who's evil. Why don't you just ask your question? We were discussing the disciples. What color were they? Well, I don't think we know that. For certain. But they were Hebrews, were they not? That's right. As was Jesus. Jesus was also a Hebrew. Why don't you just ask your question? What color were the original Hebrews? I have told you that we don't know that for certain. Then you can't believe for certain that Jesus was white. Just, uh, just a moment, just a moment. God is white. Isn't it obvious? Well, that is obvious, but we don't know if it's obvious that God is white. It teaches us that Jesus did not have blonde hair and blue eyes. That the images of Jesus that are on prison walls and churches throughout the world are not historically correct. Revelations chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were the flame of fire, his feet like unto flying brass, as if it burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And white people, we didn't identify as white until colonialism. Colonialism, the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country, occupying it with settlers, exploiting it economically. The state 
apparatus that was dominant under colonialism. We identified as Portuguese or Latvian or German or Italian, or... but then colonialism came around and then all of a sudden we became white and we were superior because we were the chosen race by God and the scripture verses proved it. Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Joel 2 and 27, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord, your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He's speaking to the Israelites only. And we had to go into other people's lands and preach the gospel when really it was all a ruse. It was all an excuse to go in and rape and pillage the land and the people and the cultures. So when I say that white culture is based in racism, it's based in racism. Christianity was the Trojan horse of white supremacy. How is racism rooted in Christianity? What? They've been teaching us how to be racist for a thousand years. That's it, history lesson. Let's start with the 11th century through the 13th century. At that point, the Roman Catholic Church was very focused on crusades in the Middle East. Why? Because they wanted the land of Jerusalem. They were trying to force out people that lived there, that had their homes there, and they wanted to take it over. So they did it by forcing everybody into a belief that they wanted them to have. From the 14th century through about the 17th century, they decided to do the inquisitions in Europe to make sure that anyone who didn't believe or act the way they wanted them to were forced into their religion through torture. Second Maccabees 6 and 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. For the 15th century through about the 17th century, they did the same thing in the Americas. Came over, told every indigenous person, you have to li listen to us, believe what we believe, or you're going to die. Second Maccabees 6 and 4, for the temple was filled with riot and revelings by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places and besides that brought in things that were not lawful. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbidden. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast days or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And of course, the 18th century through the early 1900s, all the European nations noticed this ability for white people to come into foreign nations and conquer them and take over from Christianity. So they did the same thing in Africa. My whole point is that Christianity, from early on, has been going into foreign nations, people who act differently than they do, look differently than they do, and telling them how they're supposed to act and what they're supposed to do, and then punish them if they don't agree. That is racism at its core. At this point, I'm convinced that Christianity has taught humanity what racism is and how to go about it and how to do it better than anybody else. And colonialism. And Western Christianity, as we know today, is still based within superiority. All Christians think that they're better than everybody else. I grew up in it. I'm very familiar with the culture. And it's part of the problem. There's a reason why most of Trump supporters are Christians. I'm an atheist, but uh, I align more closely with a Christian conservative worldview. And so uh, I pretty much support Christian conservatism, that whole, that whole moral compass, and so that's what I stand for. Sorry that you happen to be black in a black neighborhood standing on a corner where they endlessly find people with guns and drugs. I'm sorry. So they should be shot if they're not? They're not being shot. They are, but at a, on a disproportionate rate. No, three times. I don't believe that at all. When you look at when you look at it, he's married immigrants. Three of them are immigrants. So what does that tell you? Is he racist? No. What would solve the whole thing in the border if they would just start shooting? Only shoot a couple, and they would go home. You think deterrence would work? They, if they would shoot. It's because they don't even realize 
that the conditioning of colonialism and Christianity and the patriarchy is so deeply embedded within them and their identity that they don't even see the truth. Christianity is based in superiority, in white superiority, in white culture, which is all based in racism. I'm tired of this church. So basically what she's saying in a nutshell, Christianity is rooted in white supremacy. They pretty much, I get it, they had to create a religion for themselves, for their people, and they had to also create them a God who looked like them and get other people, the children of Israel, to worship that God. But it makes perfect sense because if you go back to Genesis, they were rejected by our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is a black man. He rejected them. And then once they were born, he hated them. So it makes perfect sense why they would have to create their own religion and then put themselves above us, superior to us. Why? For rulership, for power, for mind control, right? And to make us feel like we are inferior to them and also to get us to worship their God, which is that white Jesus, which would be idolatry, which would cause us to be in transgression against our God. Because we are to worship one God, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His name is Yahweh. But they gave us this white Jesus, this blonde head, blue eye, to worship. Because by doing that, you are basically saying you're inferior to the white race and they are superior to you. If you really listen to them, they'll tell you who their God is and what their God looks like. And it's two different gods. Our gods do not look the same. And they tell you that if you just listen. And of course, so basically, they created an all whites club. No brownies allowed except for the brownies that are willing to worship a white god and make themselves inferior to the white race so it makes perfect sense why they created christianity but what we have to remember here on earth this is our hell and this is their heaven and guess what they have a god their god is white it looks like them that's where they get their white supremacy from to be in control to be in power to rule over us to oppress us and to get us to worship them right but there's coming a time in our heaven which will be their hell our god is a black man and in fact we are superior to them it's nothing different than a bully who feels insecure about himself and so he picks on that person that he think is weaker than him or that doesn't look like him or maybe it's something that he's jealous of that person about he'll pick on that person and bully that person to make himself feel better it's no different from white supremacy racism or christianity the most high rejected them he told them he hated them so they're see they're bastards really they don't have a father so our people have to wake up and come about a Christianity, repent of your sins, and return back and keep the most high law statutes and commandments. Shalom.